Jay Lewis, formerly known as Lil JJ, is speaking up about some horrifying things that went on at Nickelodeon. As previously reported, investigation discoveries, quiet on set, the dark side of kids' TV, recently sparked outrage online by revealing Nickelodeon's purportedly evil tactics. The extensively discussed documentary features accounts from former child stars and production crew members who accused the network's chief producer, Dan Schneider, of sexual misconduct. Dan Schneider is accused of forcing massages, coercing female authors into immoral actions, and putting improper jokes into the minors' compositions. Members on several hit Nickelodeon shows alleged Schneider pressured female staffers to give him massages. Some also now find it inappropriate Schneider appeared in skits with Amanda Bynes, referring to the skit where the two were in a hot tub. Bynes would appear in a swimsuit while Schneider appeared fully clothed. Some former child actors who appeared in the docu-series said Schneider developed a close relationship with Vine, appearing to mentor and run lines with her as the two were reportedly often alone together numerous times while on set. Schneider has since defended his relationship with Vine, who didn't appear in the docu-series. He said he supported Bynes' decision to emancipate from her parents and assisted her when she attempted to run away from home. Former child actors and alums from another Nickelodeon series, All That, shared their experience as being the few black actors working with Schneider on the show in the early 2000s. Brian Hearn, who starred on All That, believed he was racially stereotyped by appearing in sketches, which featured him as a rapper named Little Fetus, and a teen who sold cookies but played the sketch seemingly referring to drug dealing. He said he was referred to as a piece of charcoal and was uncomfortable wearing the leotard costume as a growing young teen at the time. Wilde felt like they were a part of a torture chamber where they couldn't say no. Whether it's an adult or whether it's a teenager who has this dream of being a star, they're becoming a star, and they're probably being reminded on a regular basis, which is another part of those power dynamics, that hey, if you leave, there's a thousand more people lined up right behind you to take your spot. And they're aware of that. They know that, that I'm not in the position of power. And so if I come in and I speak up, um, you know, what's going to happen to me is I might be out the door and I know there are thousands of kids behind me who are just dying to step in here. So it just becomes so much is at stake, I think. And so it just becomes, you know, yes, my dream is coming true and it's, it's a nightmare. And yet, do I want to give up that dream? Is it going to get better? You know, I mean, there's all these things I think that we tell ourselves. Another former child actor for the series, Giovanni Samuel, spoke on one scene where they were required to drink large amounts of fake coffee and sugar, which she later said felt like waterboarding. The two said while they were kids, they were shocked to learn sexual predators had been employed on the show. One being a former production assistant, Jason Handy, who had worked on shows like All That and The Amanda Show. Handy was arrested in 2003 for kissing and touching a nine-year-old girl and later convicted for child abuse and child pornography. Handy had reportedly worked with many kids on the set. One parent of a former Amanda Show extra said her daughter had received explicit images sent by Handy. Many people have wondered how many of the then minors were victims in the aftermath of the startling disclosures. Teenagers, and you befriend them at first, and you develop a relationship. You talk about how special they are, and you're going to be the big star, et cetera, et cetera. You become buddies with that person. They start to trust you. And then over time, that relationship starts progressing, and that person starts you know, croaching boundaries, encroaching them a little, you know, smaller and smaller at a little bit at a time. And of course, it's is only to their advantage to, you know, disconnect them or isolate them as much as possible from other people who might see your agenda or have their own agenda in terms of protecting their child. So that's something that you see child predators in a number of settings do. Referring that, and then you think about when you think about developmentally, you think about young teenagers, and you think about their goal really is to. Um, you know, it's to find out who they are. So part of t being a teenager is rebelling a little bit against your parents, right? You know, I don't know who I am yet, but I'm not you, mom. I'm not you, dad. That's just part of that natural process. And so it creates a, a especially vulnerable situation in terms of this teenager who is looking to other people to kind of help define who they are. And then if you have a, a predator, is there. It's, again, another opportunity for them to befriend this person. I'm going to help you with your career. You're going to be a star. You know, we're buddies, you know, which it should never be that way. You're not a buddy. If you're in your 30s and somebody's 15, you're not a buddy. You could be a coach. You could be, you know, you could be, but you're not a buddy. And when you start acting like a buddy, that's a red flag. Jay Lewis, the winner of BET's Comedy Search, deepened the storyline with an indirect reference in a social media post. 
However, Jay Lewis, also known as Little JJ of the series Just Jordan, would shock fans with his reaction to Quiet on set. Lewis would go on to break his silence on Facebook. Just Jordan got canceled. I ain't giving up no A, LOL. This would cause several to react. Show didn't even make it to season three and they was already trying to get him to sell out. A dang shame. These producers slash directors and any other adult behind these kids shows need to be investigated thoroughly. This is sick. Y'all forgot about the only great black themed show Nick ever had? Ain't no way fam. That's wow, cause that show was amazing. That man didn't produce this show, LOL. That got canceled for other reasons. Well now for the first time ever, Schneider has broken his silence, giving his own reaction on what it was like to watch the docuseries, detailing his behavior. In a conversation with actor Bobby K. Bowman, who worked on iCarly for several years. The interview was done for The Hollywood Reporter and even shared on Schneider's own YouTube page, although the comment section has been turned off. During the talk, Schneider would say, facing my past behaviors, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret, and I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. There were lots of people there who witnessed it who also may have felt uncomfortable, so I owe them an apology as well. It was wrong. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. And in addition to apologizing, Schneider also reiterated information he released in a statement earlier this week, stating that anything that was aired on television went through multiple layers of approval, which included network executives and other adults that were present on set. He would continue, every one of those jokes was written for a kid audience because kids thought they were funny. Now we have some adults looking back at them 20 years later through their lens. I have no problem with that. Let's cut those jokes out of the show. Now, of course, folks had a lot to say as soon as the interview was released. Many have already criticized this interview because of the relationship between the actor and producer. One user would write, this was not an interviewer. This sounds like a friend asking his friends questions. The Hollywood reporter should be ashamed. Another social media user chimed in and said, I can't even watch this fully because they are friends. Why are we going light on someone who did not protect kids or his staff? He was a grown man who knew what he was doing. He abused his power. This is not right. One more online user wrote, this is disgusting because it shows that Hollywood protects their own or their club. Even before the doc hit, Dan's reputation as a creep was a known fact for those who are in the industry. If you didn't know, the now 33-year-old hosted his own sitcom, Just Jordan, on Nickelodeon from 2007 to 2008. The show aired for two seasons before being canceled. Amidst the rise of the Hash Me Too movement in the entertainment industry, there was another story unfolding behind the scenes involving Dan Schneider, the creative force behind beloved Nickelodeon, shows like All That, The Amanda Show, Drake and Josh, Zoe 101, and iCarly. While Nickelodeon's tween empire continued to grow, reports began to surface about Schneider's conduct on set. The situation came to a head with the release of Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, a documentary series by Investigation Discovery. This series shed light on the allegations surrounding Schneider, revealing a disturbing picture of the work environment he allegedly fostered. Workers described Schneider as unpredictable and often intimidating, with long hours becoming the norm for both child actors and adult staff. The documentary detailed instances of alleged sexual harassment and a culture of fear, where speaking out seemed risky due to the perceived threat of retaliation. Some interviewees even likened their experiences to being in an abusive relationship. Good morning, y'all. Watching back some of these scenes and sketches now as an adult, it hits you immediately how inappropriate some of this content was. So much so we can't even air some of them in our story this morning. For the children on these sets, they tell us many of these jokes went over their heads, but the adult behavior was all around them. For children of the 90s and early 2000s, Nickelodeon was home to some of the most popular shows of the era, from the sketch comedy hit All That 
to The Amanda Show. My name's Amanda. But in the new investigation discovery docuseries, Quiet on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, some of the former child stars behind those shows say they were subjected to inappropriate work environments. One star even claiming he was sexually abused. <laughs> And if we don't get all these people out of here in less than two hours, our lives are over. Drake Bell from the show Drake and Josh revealing for the first time publicly that he is the John Doe victim in the 2003 child sexual abuse case against his dialogue coach, Brian Peck. Bell claims that Peck purposely isolated him from his father, who was also his manager. I think Brian got a sense that my dad was on the watch. And so he started to really drive a wedge between my dad and me. He started talking about how my dad's stealing my money. Nobody likes that my dad's on set. He's a real problem. I was believing it because he's been in this business for so long and he must know more than us. Peck was convicted in 2004, sentenced to 16 months in prison and is now a registered sex offender. Bell says that abuse put him on a path of self-destruction, including two DUIs and a 2021 child endangerment conviction. Nickelodeon saying in a statement, we are dismayed and saddened to learn of the trauma he has endured and we commend and support the strength required to come forward. I can't even describe the feeling to know that there was a monster among, among us. Giovanni Samuels and Brian Hearn starred in All That in 2001 and say Peck worked closely with the child actors. When you saw who the victim was, it broke my heart. I cried. We weren't close with Drake, mm -hmm. but we were around him. He was a legend. And so to find out that he was being harmed Brutally hard. In a, in a terrible way, what is, it, it infuriated me. Hearn and Samuels also speaking about former writer and executive producer Dan Schneider, who Nickelodeon parted ways with in 2018 after complaints he created a hostile work environment. What was it like working for Dan Schneider? Dan. <laughs> You're asking the two black children on a Nickelodeon set where we were overlooked. The actors were calling sketches written by Schneider's team like on air dare. Yeah. Those were torture moments for all of us. Hearns Dare had him covered in peanut butter and then licked by dogs. My on air dare, I was saying, I don't like this. And to see that is and to voice it and, and to have voiced it. I don't like this and to be ignored because, oh, it's funny. Yeah. Is it, was it funny? Come Who on. was it funny for? Right. One for me. Hearn and Samuel say funny. they hope the series there? sparks an important there? conversation okay. Okay. about the treatment of child actors. Another chilling account came from an editor who recounted being rushed to the hospital due to stress, only to hear concerns about the show's progress instead of inquiries about her well-being. In response to the allegations, a representative for Schneider issued a statement to Teen Vogue, acknowledging his past behavior and expressing remorse for crossing boundaries. Schneider admitted to inappropriate jokes and pranks, as well as acknowledging that some sketches went too far, expressing regret for any discomfort caused to young actors and apologizing for his treatment of others. In the early 2000s, three Nickelodeon employees were convicted of child sexual abuse. One of the survivors, Drake Bell, recently spoke out publicly for the first time about the abuse he endured as a child from Nickelodeon acting coach Brian Peck. Peck, who was reportedly a regular presence on sets, including those overseen by Dan Schneider, subjected Bell to extensive and brutal abuse. Peck later pleaded no contest to two charges of sexual abuse, resulting in a 16-month prison sentence and registration as a sex offender. Drake had this to say about his sentencing. It was a different time, so I think it was a little easier to go to and from a courthouse and not worry about Twitter that night or TMZ paparazzis being there. On the day of sentencing for Brian, I get to the courthouse. It was the most unbelievable thing I'd ever seen. His entire side of the courtroom was full, full. 
there were definitely some recognizable faces on that side of the room. And my side was uh, me, my mom, and my brother. Brian had been convicted, but getting all of this support from a lot of people in the industry, and yeah, I was pretty shocked. My mom got up, she had a statement. I wasn't going to address Brian. There was no, no reason to. I addressed my statement to everyone in the room. I looked at all of them, and I just said, how dare you? And I said, you will forever have the memory of sitting in this courtroom and defending this person. And I will forever have the memory of the person you're defending violating me and doing unspeakable acts and crimes. And that's what I'll remember. His father had a very intriguing grasp on the situation. You hear scuttlebutt about the business and what you gotta watch your kids and this and that. So I was very attentive. All the other parents would be seen and not heard, which I would never interrupt anything, but very rarely sat in the green room. I'd always be offset somewhere where I could always keep my eyes on Drake. And unfortunately, I started seeing Brian start to just hang around Drake too much. And it didn't, didn't set well with me. Drake would be in the dressing room or something, and in would pop Brian and um, uh, just touch Drake. You know, do things that, wait a second, what are you doing? Drake can put that on himself. And the thing is, this is in front of people. Then he'd, he'd maybe walk over to Drake and be feeding him some lines or whatever and put his arm around his waist, put his hand up on his shoulder and kind of run it down his arm and things like that. And this would happen routinely. It was just always uncomfortable. One child actor even talked about a John Wayne Gacy letter in Brian Peck's house. I remember at the time, I think it was about like two and a half years in, Everyone went to Brian's house for a barbecue, and his house was a little off. He had a room that was just dedicated to like vintage toys and comic books, and he'd converted his garage into like a Planet of the Apes shrine. I noticed a painting in the room that stuck out to me because it had nothing to do with Planet of the Apes. It was of a birthday clown holding balloons. And Brian got very excited when I asked him about it. He flipped the thing around, and on the back it said, to Brian, I hope you enjoy the painting. Best wishes, your friend, John Wayne Gacy. It was a self-portrait of serial killer, John Wayne Gacy. At this point, I'm like, 14. I didn't know like the details, but I knew like this guy's a serial killer who like killed a lot of young men and boys. My instinct was like everyone has to see this. And so like all the parents and the kids come into the room and then Brian presents the painting again. And Brian actually developed a pen pal relationship with John. He kept like this pile of letters and photos from John Wayne Gacy in his nightstand next to his bed. And he like pulls them out and starts showing them to me. Your instinct is to give someone the benefit of the doubt if you've known them for that long, even in the face of like this really bad sign. It was one of those like classic failures of group psychology. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.